Welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So I am really excited about the project that I have to share with you today because this was going into new territory for me with sewing. So today's project is a coat and I had actually never made a coat before. So I had so much fun working on this. It was definitely a challenge and it took me quite a lot of time to get through all of the instructions and go through this pattern. I used the Tasuti Fabrics Oslo coat pattern and I thought it was a really great option for for a first coat because it's not super fitted. So I thought it would be a good one to start out with and I'm glad that I chose that pattern because it was really fun to work with. So let me show you the coat really quickly. Here is what it looks like. The outer fabric is from Mood Fabrics. It's this wool blend and this really pretty plaid or checkered pattern. And then the inside is lined in this cream colored satin that I got from Joanne Fabrics. And I really like the combination of the two fabrics. The coat has this wide collar that is made up of the front pieces just fold it back and then it's not very fitted throughout but it has two buttons in the front. I think it's really really cute and just a really nice style. I really wanted to get into coat making because I've always loved really colorful fun coats but coats are very expensive so I thought it would be a really fun thing to be able to make myself because you can buy the fabric for so much cheaper than you can buy a really nice coat. So it's something that I'm definitely wanting to do more of and I'm really happy with how this first one turned out. Before I get into the sewing process, let me just say that this is probably not going to be the most detailed explanation of how to do these different techniques because this was my first time making a coat. So I'm just going to kind of take you through the process as I went through it and I hope you guys enjoy. So let's go ahead and cut to the sewing. So to get started today, I'm going to begin by cutting out all of my fabric. And for this coat, there are a lot of pattern pieces and a lot of pieces to be cut out. So I'm going to start with the outer fabric and lay out my pattern pieces. I'm also going to check to make sure that these pieces are laying straight with the grain. So you can see that I'm using my measuring tape here and checking at the arrows to make sure that that measurement matches up. That just means that this is going to hang nicely once everything is sewn together. And then I'm ready to go ahead and start cutting out all of the pieces out of the main fabric. I am also going to mark any of the notches on the pattern just to make sure that everything matches up properly when I am done. The pieces that I'm cutting out here in this clip are the coat front and back and then there are also a few more pieces. There is the coat front facing which you see here as well as the upper and lower sleeves. So each sleeve is made out of two pieces on this coat and then a pocket facing and a neck facing. So now I'm ready to move on to my satin fabric to cut out the lining. So there is a similar number of pieces of lining fabric because a lining is pretty much just another coat inside of a coat. There are some pocket pieces here though that were not in the outer fabric pattern pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and pin all of this down and cut it out in the same way that I did the outer fabric. I chose a satin fabric for the lining because some of my favorite coats that I have purchased have satin lining and I love that that makes it really easy to put the coats on over chunky sweaters and things like that. They don't catch on anything. So I really like using satin for a lining. And then with all of my lining pieces cut out, there was just one more thing to cut out and that is the interfacing. So to give a little bit of extra body to the fabric, you use fusible interfacing for this project. So I went ahead and cut out all of the pieces that required interfacing from my fusible interfacing. So with all of my pattern pieces finally cut out, I could get started sewing and I was very excited to actually get to do some sewing after all of that cutting. So I decided to start by constructing my lining and the first step was to pin the back pieces together at the center seam and stitch that down with a straight stitch. I like constructing the lining first just so that once I finish the outside, I have my lining ready to go. So after I had sewn that seam, I went ahead and pressed it open and made sure that everything looked really nice and crisp on the inside. Thank you. 
Now this pattern does have a pleat in the back of the lining, so I went ahead and matched up the notches at the top of the neckline and pinned and pressed my pleat in place and then went ahead and stitched that down just to secure it during the construction process. After I had stitched that down, I did go ahead and press the pleat all the way down at the back of the coat. So the next step was to add the lining front pieces. So I'm just pinning that down the side seam with the right sides together on both sides and I'm going to go ahead and stitch that down again with a straight stitch and press it open once again. Because this lining will be on the inside of the coat, none of these seams are going to be visible so I don't have to worry about finishing off any seams with my serger today. Now with the lining front and back put together, I can move on to the sleeves and I'm going to start by pinning the upper and lower sleeve together with the right sides together and stitching the upper seam down with a straight stitch and then pressing it open. Then I can move on to the lower sleeve seam. So I'm just going to pin and sew this down. Now you'll see in the clip here that I am leaving a gap in this and I ended up changing my mind and changing the method um, for the lining. So that was how the pattern said to do it, but I ended up just sewing mine closed. So with my sleeves constructed, I can now add them to the lining. So I'm going to pin this into the armhole with the right sides together, matching up all of the notches that I cut in the fabric when I was cutting this out to make sure that everything is in the right place. Then I'll just sew all the way around this curve. Because this is a raglan sleeve, it's not a complete circle, it's just a curve. That just means that it's going to sit over the shoulders instead of um, being in the armhole. So I'm just going to sew that down again with a straight stitch and press the seam open once again. Now that the lining is constructed, I can move on to the outside of the coat. So I'm going to start by applying my fusible interfacing to the front coat pieces. So here I'm applying it to the front facing. And you'll notice I did decide to patch that a little bit because my interfacing wasn't quite long enough. I'm also going to add a little bit to the lower hem of the front pieces as well as to the collar area of the front and then where the button placket will go as we continue constructing the coat. So the first step in constructing the outside of the coat is to add the pocket pieces. So I'm going to start with the front pocket pieces and pin them according to the markings and sew those in place. You'll notice that these are stitched down with a little bit of a gap on either side and that's just going to make it look really neat when I turn it to the inside. I also went ahead and understitched this and then I'm just going to clip in where the seam ends and turn this to the inside and press it down. You'll see that that allows the edge of the pocket to go back into the seam allowance here. Moving on to the back pocket pieces, I'm going to add the pocket facing and to do this I am just folding down that edge and then matching it up to the pocket and top stitching it in place to keep everything secure. So now I can attach my pocket pieces together to form the pocket bag. So I'm just going to pin the pocket pieces together and stitch all the way around the curve. Next up, I'm going to put the front and back pieces together. First, I'm going to apply a little bit of interfacing to the lower back piece just to make that hem a little bit more crisp when we finish this off. And then I'm going to pin the front and back pieces together with the right sides together along the side seam. Now, the cool thing about this pocket construction is that I can just sew all the way down without catching my pocket in the seam and it gives it this really flat, nice finish. I had never done that technique before, but I think it looks really, really great. So now I can move on to putting my sleeves together and this is just the same as it was for the lining with the addition of a little bit of interfacing on the bottom of the sleeves. So I'm just going to start with the upper seam and sew that down and then continue with the lower seam. Now I can add my sleeves to the armholes and again this is just the same process as I did for the lining so I'm just matching these into the notches, pinning it down and sewing it down. So after sewing my sleeve in place, I had these edges left on the outside of the coat that will become the collar. So I'm going to pin those with the right sides together and sew this down and press that seam open. After I press that open, I can go ahead and attach this to the back of the coat. So it creates this really cool fold over collar shape. To help the collar fit into the neckline, I did put two clips with my scissors into the neckline edge, and that just helps everything to fit into place a little bit more easily. So once that is pinned down, I can go ahead and sew it down and make sure to backstitch really well here as well. 
So next I'll be working with the facing pieces. This will become the inside of the collar and the front of the coat, and I'm going to start by sewing the top edges together. Then I'm going to go ahead and take my fusible interplacing and apply that to the neckline facing, which I am then going to add to the interior facing. I know this is a little bit confusing, um, but it should make sense as you see it going forward. So I'm going to sew that into place here. To me, this was one of the most complicated parts of constructing the coat, but I just followed the instructions as best I could, and it made sense as I went along. There are these two smaller edges left, so I'm just going to pin those together with the right sides together and stitch that down. So now with my facing put together, I can go ahead and add this to the front of the coat. So I'm going to pin this down all the way around the outside edge with the right sides together and sew it down with a straight stitch. Then I'll turn it to the inside, and I'm also going to understitch this to make sure that it lays really flat. And once I finished understitching, I also went ahead and basted together the neckline seams just to make sure that this stays really unified and doesn't move around as I add the lining. So now the coat is really starting to take shape and I can go ahead and add the lining to the outside of the coat. And to do this, I will be pinning the lining to the coat facing with the right sides together. And I will sew all the way around that edge, just like I sewed the facing onto the coat. And then I will turn this to the inside and press all of the seams really flat. So here is how it looks now that the lining is attached. I love the lining. I think it looks so, so pretty. And all that's left to do now is to hem the sleeves and then hem the bottom of the coat. Now I decided to do this a little bit differently than the pattern instructions indicated. So I just tried it on and marked where I wanted my sleeves and hem to sit. And then I just folded up the outside edge and then folded in the lining to cover it and stitched all of this down with an invisible hand stitch. I just really like the finish of this and I think it looks really nice and tidy. And it was actually a little bit easier to me to do as well than sewing it on the machine because I feel like I get a little bit more control sewing it by hand. So I did this for both the sleeves and for the lower edge. And with the coat fully constructed, the very last step is to add the buttons and buttonholes. So I went ahead and measured in three quarters of an inch from the edge and marked where the button and buttonholes should go based on the pattern. And then I sewed a buttonhole at the outer edge of each side of the coat and attached my buttons, sewing them on by hand. I used a decorative button for the outside and then just a really simple button that I had in my button stash for the inside. And with that, this coat was done.
here's a look at how the coat turned out. I'm so, so happy with it. I think it turned out really well for being my first coat, especially if I were to make it again, the only alteration I would make is to add a little bit of interfacing to the side seam. I think this would keep it from buckling a little bit at the sides, which I think mainly has to do with the lightweight nature of my fabric. But overall, I'm really happy with it. I love the colors and I love the fit of it as well. I think it's just super cute and perfect for fall. And I'm so excited to wear it for the rest of the season. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching the sewing video, the sewing process video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I had so much fun with this project. Even though it was pretty challenging, I just feel really accomplished having made a coat and I'm excited to be able to wear this one. I think it's gonna be so cute with different pieces in my fall wardrobe. So I hope you enjoyed following along with me during this process. If you did enjoy this video and you would like to see more content like this, you can go ahead and subscribe by clicking the red button down below. And I would love to have you along for future videos if you like sewing, DIY, thrifting style, all of those types of things. That's what I share on this channel. And if you'd like to keep up with me outside of YouTube, Instagram is the best place to do that. So I will put my username somewhere on the screen here so you guys can go check me out over there if you're interested. But thank you again so much for watching today and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye.